Good evening, everybody. Sammy Thunder here. Welcome back to the channel. Tonight, we're going to be exploring part two of this small series that I started on my channel called Looking Into My Collection. Part one was all about looking at my Christy Matthewson collection and talking a little bit about his history and his legacy. It's kind of fun to take the cards out every now and then you know, see all of them together. And when you look at them, it kind of paints a picture of stories in terms of how you got the card, where you got the card from. And also, since I've been reading the book about Matthewson, you can start kind of connecting certain, like a timeline of history, so to speak. Tonight, we're going to be doing just that with Tom Seaver. Between him and Nolan Ryan, those two are arguably my favorite Golden Age pitchers. Seaver and Ryan were pretty much one year apart in terms of uh, their career coming into the league. Obviously, uh, Nolan Ryan has the longevity factor, but Tom Seaver definitely has accolades that are amongst the elite. Nolan Ryan too, but Tom Seaver has something that is really special. He's only one of two pitchers in history to have 3,000 strikeouts, 300 wins, and a sub-3 ERA. The other pitcher is Walter Johnson. Let's kick this into gear. Let me show this first. This is a ticket stub. It's not a Tom Seaver item, but it is a ticket stub that correlates to Tom Seaver. This was given to me by Junk Wax Hero Mike a while back. This is it right here. This is from his rookie season, August 22nd, 1967. Um, mezzanine reserved. Pretty cool. I do not believe that Seaver won this game. I think it was against the Phillies. But it was his rookie year. And I think it was a very close game, like 2-1. to one. I have to look at baseball reference to confirm that, but... It's a cool little collector's item ticket stub from his rookie season and he pitched that day, which makes it even more special. Since I have a lot of Seaver stuff, I'm going to go through this rather quickly. This piece right here. When they unveiled the Seaver statue they, on day two of the opening, opening day, I want to say, what was it, two or three years ago, they gave out the statue replica as a, um, what do they call those, just gifts or souvenirs, I don't know. so everybody got one that went to the game that day, and uh, this is pretty cool, on the side they show Seaver and his, uh, in the stretch, here's another so it's, it's a shame that, you know, Seaver passed away before he was able to get the statue done of him. But quite a cool piece, this replica. And the statue is even more amazing if you ever go to City Field. This big piece right here, i got to be gentle with because it's um, I haven't gotten a chance to protect it. I keep it in the set envelope that it came in. This is the Stark um, Daily News edition that they came out with. I think this is from, I think it might be from 69 or 70. I can't remember which year. But the whole team has their own sketch. This was a print that was done by the artist uh, Stark. I forget his first name. But everyone's in there. Nolan Ryan, um, all the you know big names. Yeah, Tug McGraw, um, I want to say yeah, Cleon Jones, you, you, Jerry Kuzman, and all the all the all the the Mets are in there from that year. But this is a pretty cool piece, and I'm trying to keep it preserved. Moving right along, there's a lot of pieces, but I wanted to share this one because this this was a gift, and I never forget gifts when I get them. Um, this was uh, given to me at the Chicago National uh, a little over a year ago by uh, my co-host on Cardboard and Cold Ones, Jason. 
everyday card collector. He gave this to me because he knew how much of a Nolan Ryan and Seaver fan I was. Pretty cool to see these two together. It kind of, I'm sure it makes the Mets sick to see that. The fact that, oh, they missed out on a phenom like Nolan Ryan. Um, you know, it really was the Angels pitching coach that was able to work out the kinks with Nolan Ryan to be able to turn him into this stud pitcher that he became. But really cool tops uh, 70, uh, yeah, 77 card. Strikeout leaders, Tom Seaver and Nolan Ryan. Pretty cool. Thank you, Jason, again. I'm just going to pick up random here. This one is the 1970. I, to, I always call it the Kellogg's card, but um, I know it has a proper set name. I picked this one up at Garfield off of uh, a dealer named Chris who sets up from time to time. He always has really sharp looking cards, and I got this out of a kind of like a bargain bin box that he had. Gave me a nice deal on it, and I know these are very sensitive, being that if they get touched or bent or anything like that, they can crack very easily. So I'm very, very careful with this piece, but it's pretty cool. This one, I think this is the Philly Show Milton Bradley card, because I have two of them now. And this one has some wrinkles, so I got this for like five bucks at the Philly Show. It has some wrinkles in there, and I didn't have one, and it's not like these are tough to find, but they're not at every table because, you know, there's, it's such a niche market of people that want stuff like this. Um, oh, I think this is from the 69 edition. I'm not 100% sure. I think the size difference makes the, all the difference in the world in terms of which year is what. But I have another one coming up, I think, somewhere in this huge stack of stuff that I have. <laughs> so this one is a really awesome find. The Sportscasters 77 um, Tom Seaver. Great shot of him. I thought the sportscasters, the, whoever the photographer was, or whoever got the licensing for the photo, did a great job. Um, you know, it's you really get the gist of how far down Seaver went during in his motion. Uh, you could because the he was famous for um, his knee scraping the dirt on every pitch, so or the driving knee or the driving leg for that matter, but. Really cool piece. I bought like a whole box of these uh, sports casters and I kept the Seaver for myself. The, oh, what are these? The Milk Duds. I almost forgot for a second. The Milk Dud card. Um, <laughs> it's kind of got this, it has the Seaver face. It's the same photograph. And he looks just completely dazed and confused. The Seaver face. Just very smiling, very happy. Um, yeah, I picked this one up. I think I picked it up at like a yard sale or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but it's a cool little piece. I know I'm not a huge fan of the Milk Dead set in particular, but I'll pick out the card. I like the I just like the little cards. Uh, the whole Milk Dead. I I don't I don't like it when it's flattened and graded. Um, it just doesn't really look good to me in a slab. That's just my opinion. This one's very special because my sister had this for many, many years after I gave her this card as a gift because she was, you know, she was a Mets fan. I mean, I think she still sort of is, I guess. Uh, I don't know how hard of a, how she, how much she looks at the team these days. But um, what's fun is that I gave her this card probably, I don't know, years and years and years ago. And uh, I guess it was about a year and a half, two years ago, and she said, hey, do you, uh, do you want this card back? And I said, sure. And what was remarkable to me is that when she gave this back, it was um, not in a top loader, not in a sleeve. It was just kind of sitting, you know, just sitting there. And um, remarkably, it really didn't get all that damaged. No wrinkles, no creases. And for anyone who loves miscuts, this is the card. So um, it's a special 
um, has sentimental value for that reason, just because it's, originally I bought it probably when I was a teenager, um, I gave it to my sister, and then I got it back, so <laughs> pretty cool. Since we're on the 69 uh, Seaver, um, this one came from Craig B, Craig B Cards, Pastor Craig, at Strongsville, he gave this to me. On the back, there's a, Ma there's a Matthewson card as well. But tonight is all about Tom Seaver. And um, as you can see, uh, the decal is kind of imprinted uh, or like um, almost like ironed onto the card, which I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know how many of, the, how many of these cards exist <laughs> with the decal stuck on the card, but that's pretty cool, man. It's uh, So, Craig, thank you so much for thinking of me when you gave me this card. This is uh, pretty cool, and I always admire looking at it and seeing how the decal is kind of imp like superimposed on top of the card itself. It's a very cool piece. I was lucky to find this one, I think, because you don't see these too often. It's the side panel to the transigram box of Tom Seaver. It's so small, it's hard to get in focus, so I'm going to go in and see if that will do it. But if not, trust me, it is Tom Seaver. <laughs> and this is the side panel cut out on the box. And <clears throat> I remember a while back having a conversation with Mangini about grading the side panels and how he thought they just didn't look right <clears throat> graded in a slab because they're so tiny. So I never kind of forgot about that, and I thought, eh, he's probably right. These probably don't look really nice. It's kind of like the Topps Magic set. Um, those get graded, I think, and... I don't know. I don't know what you guys think. Do you guys think small, like little side panel cutouts or cards are, you know, should be slabbed or should they stay? I guess it doesn't matter. Ultimately, it's really your choice and your preference. So, but I keep mine in this tobacco uh, top loader and sleeve. So this was a gift from um, Tom from Milford. Tom from Milford always gives me Tom Seaver gifts, man, all, all the time, and. Uh, I don't know too much about the. I mean, the top seventy uh, supers. I heard that these cards are uh, this. That this one's a short print, but you guys can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, tops nineteen seventy top super. Yeah, the top seventy super Tom Seaver. It's a cool little piece, and I looked online. I think these are short prints, but I could be wrong. And um, but yeah, man, Tom from Milford gave this to me. I wasn't really in the market to finding one, but um, when he gave this, I was like, yeah, cool. Now I don't need to look for one, unless I want an upgrade. But, I, you know, I don't, I'm not in any hurry. But I do have something special coming in soon that's related to this, sort of related to this. So that's on the way. Another Tom from Milford gift, the Hostess Tom Seaver cut out from the box, I think, the box, but pretty cool, toward 19, this is from, oh, I should, this is yeah, from 75, I keep on going from Tom from Milford, I think he gave me this as well, a cloth, top 77 cloth of Tom Seaver. It's so cool, the, you can just seeing the front and the way it looks, the material. Impressive that they were able to do this. Sixty-nine, seventy-three, and 75. I mean, look at that. Top 200 strikeouts for ninth consecutive season. 2.59 ERA, third best in loop. I'm not going to fold it. <laughs> Keep it as is. Keeps on going. The discs. I'm guessing they didn't have the right to. They didn't have the rights, so they airbrushed the Mets logo it's off of the cap. I see these a lot at shows, but they're just so cool. This one is the 1971. I like these a lot more, the uh, the Kellogg's um, 1971, 
Zographs, whatever you want to call them. I like these a lot more than the 1970. This one has a little more color to it, a little more pizzazz. I like the star, 3D Superstars Tom Seaver. Great photo of him, too. Nineteen sixty nine was a Globe import set. Um, they look like little piece of paper playing cards. You'd buy the you'd buy the whole thing for you could probably buy the whole set for like I don't know fifty bucks maybe, maybe even cheaper than that. Some of them had uh, there were some I think there were like two variations of the set. One had Babe Ruth in there and. Um, and like a bunch of actors, and then the other one has all baseball players or something along those lines. But yeah, Tom Seaver, Eight of Diamonds. This is the one that came in the pack that I bought uh, a while ago. It has Mantle in there, Willie Mays, Bob Gibson, you know, big names like that. I don't know if it has a Clemente. I can't remember if it does. Alright, so this is the hostess from 1977, 76. I just showed this one recently. This was came from. This is more most recent pickup, or gift from uh, Tom from Milford. It's a really cool cutout piece. <laughs> I'll never. This always makes me laugh because um, this is, came from the Garfield show, and uh, paid ten bucks for it. Can't get the card out. So, it is what it is. Overpaid for this. But I was like, yeah, you know, it's there. It's laminated, so I can't do anything with it. I just appreciate it from behind, uh, behind the lamp, from in, in front of the lamination, I guess. But I got two of them. Yeah, I got a better one at the National. This one looks a lot better. You got this one for five bucks, which I think is the right price. Good cut, too. The guy who sold this to me watches my channel. So he's very nice. He had a lot of oddball stuff, which I can appreciate. Here's the better... Um, I'm going to take it out because it has... Uh, hold on a second. This has a price sticker, so it kind of gets in front of the card. So it's going to go, hold on, I'm trying to coordinate this here. Here we go. Here's the better Milton Bradley one that I picked up at the National. Tom Seaver, much better condition than the other one. So I upgraded. Here is a Tom Seaver decal. Really nice from 69. And of course, you have to have a scratch off with Tom Terrific as well. Yep. Now we're going to get into the really good stuff. You guys know what's coming. Couldn't help myself. <laughs> Went to the Mets game with, uh, with B Roth last week. Told me that he had this, and I said, save that for me. Can't help myself. I'm the king of transigrams. No, I'm not. <laughs> but I do like them a lot. This is a gift from Blix. I did a video on this. Really, really generous. 1969 Globe Imports. This is another one that I have. So I have a raw one, and I have a graded one now. Really generous to send me this copy. He also sent some things over, to, or he's by proxy through me. Send um, gave something to Theo, so I'm gonna eventually uh, once I see Theo again, I will give him that gift. Here's the graded transgram that I have a Seaver. Got this one. Was it at the March Madness? It might have been at the March Madness uh, show at the County Center in White Plains. Or it might have been the Winter Extravaganza. I can't remember. But B. Roth tipped me, to the, tipped me on to this one. He, do, he generally, he's, always, he has, he's got his finger on the pulse when it comes to cards that people are looking for. He just knows and he like 
you know, tells you right away, hey, this person has this card. But this was my big purchase from that show. Tops. 68 second year receiver 6.5 this was probably the sharpest one that i picked uh, that i've graded so far i keep generally get like fives or sixes on this i have been thinking about trying to upgrade this or you know trading this trading up to a seven i might do it because i just like the look it would just be nice to get a seven in this card because it's so tough these are really challenging to find um, higher than a seven or seven and above. Let's do this one next. This one was a recent pickup at the National, the Nabisco Team Flags. So I was really not trying to go after this one, but I saw it in a display case. Mookie actually tipped me on to this one, and I made a deal with the dealer to acquire this. Felt like I had to come away with at least a Seaver card in general, so this was there for the taking. Alright, so the next one, this one's a cool one, man. This one's really cool. This is the 68 Venezuelan Seaver. This one has a great story to it. At Garfield, at the Fish's table, and I find this sitting there. I was thinking about it, and I thought I was thinking about it repeatedly um, at, during multiple trips to the table. Mookie and Pete happened to be there at the same time, and I decided just to go for it. I made the fishes an offer for the card. They came, they countered, and I really was reluctant, but Mookie, made, Mookie said he would um, offset the additional cost by buying something at my table, which he did, so that was pretty cool. But came away with a really special card. Really, pre you know, just... Tough to find these in great shape, too. So, to get a 5.5 .5 Venezuelan is quite the feat. Coming down to the three big cards. Had to save this one for last, right, Al? Did a little bit of Seaver face. <laughs> this one, I think, is from the 19... Oh, is it 70 or 71? I can't remember. I think it's 70. Um, team team uh, pack. And these are kind of, I guess these are like the 5 by 7 or something along like 4 by 6 or something like that. And, um, you know, they, I was disappointed that this, that this set didn't have the Nolan Ryan, but um, having Seaver in there is just as good. And this came from uh, a pickup I made at one of the Connecticut shows. Guy came up and had these really cool, um, unique Mets packs that I think you got if you, maybe if you were like a season ticket holder or uh, if you wrote to the Mets and said, hey, you know, I'd love to get some autographs or whatever. But, you know, this was in, uh, this was in there. So I decided to buy it. Last two guys. I am saving this one. So you had to show the rookie card with uh, Bill Dennehy. I upgraded this one. I had a uh, PSA 3 at the time, and I upgraded to a 4.5. This one also has the PWCC exceptional sticker. And um, this thing is a beauty, man. Just beautifully centered. And um, happy to still have it. There was a time where I was thinking about moving this because of the next card, but I decided... Mookie told me, he's like, you should probably hold on to it. And I said, you're probably right. So I did. Yeah, this had to be the last card. These are tough to come by. These, are, you, these you don't see all the time. Um, Mets team-issued postcard uh, from 1967, his rookie year at Shea. Um, I wish it would focus a little better, but it's okay. There we go. I think it's a little better now, but... There it is. That's much better. <laughs> Got the Tom Seaver, the logo on the back. This has a variation. You can get the card without the logo on the back. But I think it's better with the logo. That's my opinion. I just did, I did discover recently that there's another, there's a 4x, um, what was it? I can't 
can't remember what size it is. Four by five. There's a four by five card of Tom Seaver from his rookie year from another Mets pack that they gave out. So I got to look for that. But the Mets, Mets postcards, I think, are these are just really cool looking. Also in color as well, which makes it even better. But that wraps it up for the Seaver collection, guys. Thank you for going on this journey with me. I know it's 20 going on 27 minutes, but uh, this is part two. And uh, part three will probably happen next week. Um, I have a lot going on uh, between now and then. Tomorrow is the cardboard and cold ones. So we're going to be having Chris from Missouri and Billy Ball game on with us. So that should be a lot of fun. But again, thank you guys for joining me tonight. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you soon. Take care.